And we are live with another episode of uh, Mineral Coaches. Today I have Ash with me, who is a um, main tank player, uh, right around the 2,900 mark in terms of SAR. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if you've seen any of these sessions, Ash, uh, but in general, I just like to uh, ask my students, you know, what, what their goals are, uh, what they feel like they need help with, whether it's something general or whether it's something in this VOD in particular that you struggled with. So uh, give me a bit of a rundown of your, of your goals and, and what you need help with. Okay, so I know I have absolutely no chance for pros or anything. Um, my goal is probably climb higher, uh, and then potentially thinking about coaching because I like to think about this game a lot. But mm -hmm. but that's not like a really uh, hard set goal. It just it would be nice if it happens. Mm -hmm. So you just basically want to climb a little higher, make sure that yeah. you get a bit of a pedigree so that you understand the game at a higher level. Because obviously, if you do get a little higher, especially if you don't have great mechanics, if you can get uh, to a higher start, it means you probably understand a thing or two about the game and then maybe transition into coaching, right? That's that's sort of uh, the gist of it. Yeah. Gotcha. And uh, why is this a ranked game or is this one that you're playing with your team? Uh, ranked. Gotcha. So... Why this VOD in particular? Uh, what will we be watching? Uh, anything in particular you think you struggled with in this game? Um, I just feel like as as Arisa, I feel really uncomfortable when I play into Winston. Mm -hmm. um, also, when they have like Wrecking Ball, mm -hmm. I'm wondering when should I use my uh, Fortify ability? Mm -hmm. It is a big deal if I get slammed up. Um, yeah, also Widowmakers and things uh, make me a little bit uncomfortable as well. Mm -hmm. mm. And then sometimes when the game goes tough, I kind of start doubting myself uh, when, in fact, maybe my teammates are doing worse, something like that. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is a pretty frustrating game for me. Mm -hmm. So in general, especially if your goal is to just gain game knowledge, get better, and sort of... Um you know, transition into coaching, uh, getting frustrated or losing confidence in yourself or even caring about what your teammates do uh, is just completely counterproductive. And it's not something you should uh, care about. Obviously, easier said than done. Uh, everyone, you know, you know, you, you go into a game, you want to win. Of, co of course, uh, some, some games are not winnable and uh, it, it gets annoying. But ultimately, uh, just try and treat every game as uh, an opportunity to get better, something to uh, analyze because, you know, you, you have a pretty set goal of what you want to do, I, I, I suppose. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to go too much. Um, yeah, into, watch your video yeah. with SVB. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That's where I go through it a lot. If, if you want to also, there's another section that I did with, uh, oof, what was the player's name? I think it's this sixth session maybe that i did i can i can link you the session a little bit later uh, a player who really struggled with this stuff and a lot of the review was uh, covering his mentality and and how he should approach things so if it's something you kind of um you're struggling with uh, certainly uh, i would suggest uh, viewing that and i can i can link you that after uh, this okay. session but beyond that we'll just focus on your gameplay for now just uh, changing the category on Twitch because I forgot to change it uh, before the stream. I... There we go. Thank you, Nimi. Okay, so let's uh, let's start. Do we have any comms in this game or no? Because uh, my computer kind of suffered the, uh, the, the frames a little bit, so I recorded with the replay. Gotcha. So no sound, yeah. right? I mean, no, no, no comms. No comms. Okay. No, no comms. Yes, things like that. Should I use the fortify on that one? It's a common scenario. Mm -hmm. So, because you said, should should I let him slam me up or not? So, generally, you don't want him to let you uh, to to let him slam you up simply because, okay. um, if you think about it, especially like this early in the fight. So, you know, uh -huh. uh, if if you get slammed up. 
you your head head box is obviously going to be exposed which means that maybe the snipers can pick you off so generally no you don't want uh, to get booped off uh, but you can also be a little smarter with the timing there's also situations in which because you don't you don't ideally you want to save this for as long as possible when you really need to, this to save yourself right so okay. right now you have one shield and you have another shield so you have a lot of protection here and if you see a, a ball coming straight at you like this what could you do to avoid ex uh, avoid exposing yourself even if you get slammed but also uh trying to save your you know, 45 uh go to the right wall for a cover yeah like you like that right so you see him like oh, obviously if he goes this way not that big of a worry for him oh i mean for you uh, you know obviously you have to keep uh, pay attention in case he wants to come in and boop you from the back but if he just goes in like this as soon as he's making this move you can start moving backwards because if you it is going to take time for him to go up in the air and slam you like if you look at the time that you have to react here now he slams right you, you could already be around the corner and if that's the case if, if he goes in for like a really dry it's the first thing that happens it's one of the first cooldowns that, that is used his team cannot be anywhere else than here so if you take cover behind the right wall Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you get slammed up. There's there's nothing to convert on that slam. Right. Right. So there's there's two ways you can approach it. You you, you can potentially fortify if you're like caught out in the open and you know you say uh, you're pushing the payload on Junker Town first point. You're getting close to the checkpoint. You know a Widowmaker is uh, sort of to your right. You're you're using your shield to to cover yourself and then a wrecking ball is coming in to, to slam you. There's no cover to hide behind, and that's a case where okay you have to fortify because you don't want to risk dying uh, but in a case like this where it's the first thing that happens you see it coming you have a little bit of time to react you are closer to a corner that's how you can counter it and um, okay and and, and also uh, that's something you should do automatically as as an orissa right because if, yeah. if you think about it your, your shield is pretty far up here you know and really like no one is really going to be standing here and shooting you know everyone's is going to be a little bit further back and shooting so you you with better shield placement this can become even more seamless so you should always as an orissa try to put your shields close to corners whenever possible obviously okay. when you're pushing payloads it's going to be on the payload but on on defense right so if you if you have a you could have a shield over here and mm -hmm. it covers basically the same area it still allows your team to shoot through it but it also mm -hmm. puts you in a position where instead of standing here and having to backtrack all the way like this okay you you just take one step to the right and you're behind cover especially if the shield breaks right so you always want to utilize um cover and um right and, and place your shield accordingly right so yeah you can see here N nothing would have been like you would have 100 percent saved your fortify if the starting shield is here and okay. again it doesn't change anything for you correct yeah oops Yeah, now, now the second shield is a little bit better, but still, the center of the shield, I think, might leave a little bit of a gap, right? Because you're not, because really what you what should, you should be thinking when you're putting these shields down is the corner, the corner of the shield needs to cover uh, kind of uh, the, the corner. I, I don't know if I'm explaining this well, but basically, you, you don't care if there's a bit of an opening here, but mm -hmm. there can absolutely not be an opening here. Because if, when I the shield see. is breaking, if someone is falling back, even without the shield breaking, maybe someone sneaks in an arrow or a right click or something else, right? So ideally, you put... So, so look at not even this gap, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. I yeah, th this gap you, you, you don't want, right? But also... So like, I need to like overlap lap a little bit, something like this. I, I, no, I, ideally, it doesn't overlap at all. Uh, okay. But like the, the perfect placement is sort of... It covers... Uh, the uh, so say like a, a Zen's hitbox is like up to here. It it okay. needs to cover that, right? Like the first, if you if you move the shield this way, then he's exposed. I see. Right. Oh, minor um, difference. Yeah, it's it's very it's very minor, but it's super important because it it affects your positioning as well, right? Because you're usually going to be towards the center of the, your shield. So this, I think there might be a bit of a gap here, right? Yeah. But but I if you if you notice. Yeah, but if but if you place it here, again, same thing. Like no one is really going to be looking for right clicks from this angle. Like your Zen, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have a Zen now, but your Zen, your snipers, they're going to be looking mostly towards this angle. Of course, okay. it's it's good if they can move this way, but really, you need to 
uh, you need to cover this because if your shield starts starts breaking and then Ash is here, she needs to be able to retreat, r read your shield HP and retreat uh, appropriately. Okay. Uh, wait, give me one moment. Also, this starts a little bit late, but you you know the mechanic of shooting the shield up, right? Yes. So that you, this one you shot up, right? Because you have it on off cooldown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. I think so. And and that's another another reason why having like these set set spots where you shoot it up is um, is good. Where say the, there there might be times when you're shooting up your second shield as well. Say your shield isn't say this first shield isn't taking that much damage. You're shooting up mm -hmm. your second one. You want to shoot it up in a way where. As soon as it lands, you're already ready to go around the corner, which is why another reason why it should be close to a corner. Because in theory, even this shield, in theory, you could have shot up. Right. Right. Like it, sort of when the when the door opened, and then now it would be, you know, just about coming off cooldown as well. Right. Like in, in this so, position. Mm -hmm. I tried to do that before. Um, in order to put the shield to exact same place. Mm -hmm. Um my 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 hitbox is slightly exposed over here. And one time I died from uh Hansel <laughs> Storm Arrow. <laughs> so that kinda uh um, mm, so well this is the thing. You don't always have to place it in the same spot. Especially if you're shoot just... especially if you're shooting it up, like you're giving yourself a really big advantage, which means even if mm -hmm. you're the one that you shoot up, if as long as, long as you're the timing that at which you shoot it up is good you still have uh, room for error because your second one is going to come off so even if the first one is a little misplaced like it's not perfect it might not get broken you can easily replace the second one so you give yourself a little bit of leeway right okay uh and yeah and, and you can always place it further back right like you can you can okay, go, go and you can shoot it up here back. yeah and that would be fine as well like you, you put your first one close then at like three seconds, maybe you shoot it up, you know, whatever. But, it obviously, oh, but obviously, you have to be, you have to be careful of that. No, so like you can see this ball coming at you, but you don't react. It, this was, I think, one second away off cooldown. But you're not even paying attention to him. But but like I said, n now that you kind of know how to deal with it, as soon as you see him rolling towards you, you are already mirroring his movement and moving around a corner. Okay. And and in that case, like if 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 you think about it this way, because now you get slammed and you almost die. You get saved by the uh, immortality. Yeah. yeah. And and this is what we talked about, right? Like you don't want to get slammed because it exposes your hitbox and you might die. So you obviously have to respect him, but now, like, if, if you are already stepping back, maybe the Hanzo, if the Hanzo is here, could potentially still have an angle on you, but he doesn't really have kill potential even if you get slammed because you're getting off uh, away from the Widow's uh, right. um, angle, and then immediately you can drop a shield below you when you're a little further back. So you have a lot of tools to deal with it. Or you fortify. Oh. Let's let me go back a bit. So, how do you generally use your pull? So obviously the environmental kills. Um, mm -hmm. But but in general, like how do you get value out of this? What what sort of things do you have to consider? Um, I sometimes do that to pull people out of position a little bit to help me um, secure some uh, el eliminations. Mm -hmm. So do you think like looking back, look back at this sequence? Is there a way you could have killed the monkey, and what did you not consider um, if if that's the conclusion the conclusion that you reached? Let's take a look at the sequence. 
think maybe right after he he landed, I can pull him further away from the booth. Mm -hmm. Like towards me. And why would that have been a good time? Because he couldn't get into the cover. And also, another reason? That 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 is correct. But what is another reason? Um, like the the teammates can walk through his shield bubble easier. Mm, not quite what I'm looking for. Oh, he doesn't have the jump. Uh, exactly. Um, exactly. That 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 is when I. So you 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 sort of hit everything here. As soon as he jumps and he lands, now he doesn't have any cooldowns. And like you said yourself, very far for him to any cover. So he is really, really exposed here. Which means you can you can easily, just like you do, step into the bubble here. Cause because you know when he jumps in here, everyone is gonna start shooting him. Naturally, the thing that he's gonna do is gonna he's gonna try and hide. But if you step in and you pull him towards yourself, just so he's closer mm -hmm. to you and further away from cover. Mm -hmm that will potentially give you time to break the bubble and kill him, right? And this and this is your window because you know he's not going anywhere. As, so, as long as he stays inside the bubble, he's not going anywhere. Now, obviously, if he is playing towards the edge of his bubble, you can't really go for that play because he can e easily dodge it. But even then, you can, you can potentially go for it. Like, like Imagine that he is here, right? Mm -hmm. you, then you can... Wh where could you pull to still secure the kill? Or at least to give, a give yourself a chance to secure the kill. Uh, like still around here, like right underneath. No, me. no. But if he's playing here, if he's playing where where I'm where I'm showing, uh, maybe right here to the wall. Exactly right, because if you pull here, then the bubble might block it. But if you pull, especially if you pull like over here, uh -huh. you should still be able to get him, and you're also pulling him in the air. Remember, he has no mobility skills, so not only are you pulling him further away from cover, you're also pulling him in the air. So mm -hmm. there's gonna be a bit of fall time. So you're gonna. He's gonna you're gonna keep him locked here a little bit. So that's what you kind of have to consider when you're playing around his bubble. But this is really something you absolutely have to punish. Um, I see, I see. And yeah, we, you've you've just kind of figured out. Uh, I think his... also if I pull him really close to me, Arisa does a lot of damage mm -hmm. to Winston. Yeah, like really up close. Yeah. yeah. So so now he isn't playing that position. He's playing here. So where should you pull? Like just right underneath me. Yeah. Or or here. Or here, you know, was somewhere in this vicinity, and like you say, you you can almost kill him yourself, but certainly your team uh, will be able to help you, and he'll be hundred percent dead because his jump was really bad. Because you said you you struggle against Winston's. This is why Winston's actually struggle against Orissa's. This is why Winston is really difficult to play into uh, uh, Orissa Hawk. Because if you if if you just if you just do exactly what we discussed, what can he do, right? And if he operates from the thought process that a good Orisa is going to do exactly this, or if he's here, he, she's going to pull there, then he can't really make this play. He has to be much more defensive with his jumps. He like has to he has to kind of go on the high ground, maybe drop, but he can never really he can't expose himself onto you when you have your pull. Like he can't use your jump on you when you have the pull because that's going to kill him, right? So okay. this is this is why you know. You have the advantage, not him, as long as you play the matchup correctly. Oh, Makes sense. Opportunity wasted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's just something you have to understand because it's very, very difficult for him. So, right, like, if he's smart, he's not going to get a, as much done, but he's going to play safer. Like, this isn't uh, safe at all. And yeah, he should be dying. I see. I see. But you kind of let him off the hook. You let him zap you. You also don't, you don't really back off because there might be a situation where you don't have your pull, right? If you don't have your pull, then. You obviously want to go further back and not just let him zap and farm ultimate charge on you. Uh, but you you, you oh, kind of okay. do... You do have the pull, you don't pull him, and you don't back off. So you just let him zap you as well. So there's a lot of kind of little errors. But now now he's good. Now he's he almost has his jump back. He has cover. So even if you pull him, there's going to be travel time on the pull. You're going to pull him out of cover. Then th that's going to be an opening for your teammates to shoot him, but he's immediately going to leap out. There's people can't shoot him while he's taking cover. All right. Also, I just have a quick question. Yep. Um, theoretically, the pull hook combo is not that hard, but I find it hard to execute. Um, even you know, try to communicate. How 
how should Arisa communicate that to Hog? Because I usually find maybe the Hog just use the hook before I use it, or sometimes... I mean, it's it's difficult because you can't control the Roadhog, but the only thing you can do is you can try to micromanage him as much as possible. From the very beginning, from minute one, like even before the game starts, mm -hmm. try and check if he has a microphone. If he has a microphone, then communicate with him. Ask him to give you information. Like, say your pull comes off cooldown. When is When do you have your hook? And then he might say the seconds, and then you can time your pulse based off that if he doesn't respond if he doesn't have a microphone the only thing you can do is you can still try to speak to him directly and communicate every pull i'm going to pull in two seconds right so, so you, oh, you okay, okay. If, if you say if you say now say he has a hook but he's not talking to, to you mm -hmm. and he might look for it but if you say uh, i have pull in two seconds i'm going to look for a pull main and then he's going to be oh okay and then he's, he's going to migrate here you're going to pull here he's going to hook but if you don't communicate right, if you just say pulling main and he's here and he has no idea that you're pulling, not going to happen. So basically, you're just micromanaging and calling this cooldown constantly. Rodog, I'm going to look for, and, and you even address him. That's the way you can kind of cover all your bases. And then sometimes it's still going to be hard. Sometimes the Rodog is still going to roam around and try to play make yeah. on his own and not look for these. But that's pretty much what, uh, what you can do. Give give him time to react. That That's how you execute this combo. Because he okay. has to be he has to know that the pull is coming so that he's not occupied with anything else. He has to know where the pull is gonna be. You know, it's it's important for him to know if the pull is gonna be here or here or there, right? Because because if you want to, if you say pull in two seconds and you intend to pull here, but he sees something here, and you say I'm pulling, and he's gonna be like, well, where's the pull? I don't I don't see it. So the more you can specify where it is. So a pull in two seconds. I'm gonna pull main road. Are you ready? And then if he has a microphone, yeah, yeah I'm ready. If if you know that he doesn't, then he's just hopefully gonna look there at least. Okay, I see. Right? He just hooked. You saw that? Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Uh, Moira died. Wait. You know, you could have said, I I'm going to pull main. And you pull, okay. potentially here, and then maybe he can hook that. But now he hooked, and like, you're not synced up. Being synced up on the pull hook is pretty much it. And the way you get synced up is you communicate your cooldowns. So you see, like, this shield isn't that bad, right? If you look at it. It covers... Oh, oh yeah. It covers... You see oh, that? It, it covers it covers all of this. So it's not bad. Oh, sorry. But, it, like, if it's here, then it might not cover it, right? So it's, it, it's very, very tiny details. Yeah. And especially if, if, so if you're playing against a composition that has a lot more shield breaks, say you're playing against an Orisa, because now you're not playing against a lot of shield breaks. So yeah, when you don't have a lot, the enemies don't have a lot of shield break, you can get punished a lot less, uh, you know, in, in terms of where you can put your shield. But say you're against Orisa, Hog, Hanzo, and a bunch of uh, other heroes, where would a better shield placement be and why? I see. Where? where? That, that was the question. Uh probably like why why would this not be that great maybe because they exposed to too big of an area yeah they, they that's have easier one. time and also i need to be closer to cover because yeah. it, it will break pretty fast yeah is if you play here it breaks very very fast you might have to fortify to j just to get back here then your fortify might be over you might get pull hooked Nice. So in that case, you probably have to play it here. Yeah, it's probably going to overlap with the wall a little bit, but also you don't have that much leeway. And that is especially important to consider when your team has less shield break, shield break than them, when you know you will be losing shield war. And basically, you're, you're just posturing. You're just trying to survive for as long as possible. Um, but yeah, like that that's how you kind of have to think about it. Okay. Again, you know, like very early fortify, uh, you get booped and then you fortify, you know, and and you never think about going ar around to cover. But as, as you see, like if you would have just gone around the cover, right. don't need to fortify here. Okay. So this dragon, very dangerous, does a lot of damage. Yeah. You do not want to go into him. 
I would advise against it. But you're very, you're a very brave man, and uh, you step in. I mean, obviously you have the lamp, but still, if it gets broken, you're losing a lot of HP. So, but again, another, another like this dragon is not even a problem if you would have just read the wrecking ball's movement and started stepping back this way, because then you yeah. would be here already. You would have cleared this dragon, or you would have be backing out of it. It would have been very, very easy. So really, like the reason you even get pressured into making this mistake is because of how you messed up playing against the ball. I see. Okay, very good example, right? So what do you do wrong here against the Winston? Uh, didn't back off. Exactly. To keep the distance. Yeah. Okay. So this is one of those situations where you don't have the pull. So you can't really punish him. So if you, you have all three skills on cooldown, so you need to be a lot more aggressive, I mean defensive. You know that this when this goes down, you won't have a second one. You won't have fortified to tank damage and you won't have this to protect yourself. You've just blown everything. So basically, yeah, this shield can, can be here, but you shouldn't be here because you have to wait essentially five seconds until you can do anything, right? You, you can't start taking damage here. And you're eating all of the Winston damage. Because of that, like, he softens you up enough so that when the shield breaks, you die. But, okay. But considering your cooldowns, if you just went here... Sh should I turn, like, 180 and walk backwards instead? Yeah, you can do that. I mean, when you put that shield there. Or, I mean, in this situation, when you've already made this mistake. Uh, like, if I see this situation... Mm -hmm. um, like right now, mm -hmm. is it better just turn 180, stop shooting, and try to get away ASAP? Yeah, you can't fight this. is really slow pedaling backwards. Yeah, but you, but you still cannot take this fight. So the yeah. question becomes, where do you go? You turn around, <sighs> you, you, go, uh, you turn around 180, you hide your hitbox, you look down, but where do you go? Probably prefer going um, to the the little tunnel thing. Can you show me the arrow? Um, with, with an arrow. So, do you think you can make it back to that corner before your shield breaks, without fortify? Maybe I'm already pretty close. Um... I'm gonna go ahead and say. Not a chance in the world. You make it over to Arch. He's still gonna keep pushing. He's gonna go here. He's still gonna have an angle on you the whole way out. I don't think there's any chance in the world that you can fall back and take the Arch corner. Another reason is also, if you take the Arch corner, how are you ever going to gain map control back? You're gonna wait for your cooldowns and then what? They, they're controlling this, right? Oh, because the is really bad at pushing. Yeah, like say 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 you did hide here, they capped two ticks. Gonna be super difficult for you to retake, right? Like you're gonna start pushing in, you're gonna start taking damage, and you're probably gonna have to shield here, mm -hmm. right? If you shield here, well, no one can push on to the point. They're still getting the cap, right? And like I said, if 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 this is your starting po exactly, just where you showed. You, you I was there. also a little bit afraid of getting staggered in the in the room. Hmm. Well, then it's a different uh, issue. Then you should just walk forward and die. If you yeah, if you okay. think the fight if you think the fight is lost and there's no way you can win it, just die on point. If you oh, if, point. Okay. if you want if you want to survive, go go this way. But now now we were talking in terms of like how do I survive longer? Yeah, you know how how do I survive longer and also give myself a chance? So you say the situation is different and there's more people alive. How do you give yourself a chance to actually win the fight and that's by taking this because then you can potentially you know m maybe some people are going to be here maybe someone's going to be here maybe a tank is going to be here but there's realistically a chance where you can step out here maybe throw your shield on the corner on, on the point you know your, your teammates who are hopefully also here can maybe take some space maybe you can do a little bit of something you can go for a pull you pull something maybe your hog hooks and then you can that's your com comeback but if you if you, all of you go here and then you go here put your shield here lot longer tra travel time for the ball much harder and and also w w like from this position see you fall back here with the rest of your team what else opens up for you 
Oh, can, you, can you repeat that, please? So if, uh, if, if you your shield is, goes low here, you fall back here with your teammates, mm -hmm. like your teammates fall back here and here as well. Uh, what else can you do that you can't do from here? Uh, like a flank on here? Exactly. Wait, wait, can you show me again? Like put the shield here and... Yeah. Right, you can flip the map. You can you can potentially peek out here, go for a pull hook on a squishy here while their front line is busy over here. Right, like you you have so much more playmaking potential, and there's still a, a way you can win the fight. And even if even if you go back out here with the shield and draw aggression from the rest of the enemy team, maybe your teammates can take this, and then you're you're sandwiching okay. them. Right, maybe your hog right. flanks and and you go here. You you just buy time on the point while they make plays in the back line. Right, there's just infinitely more options. Wow, nice, nice. So it's just important to understand, like, what's going to be my next corner? What's going to be my next corner? You know, this is where I'm holding. If something goes bad, where do I fall back next? And that just kind of comes with experience. As long as you understand the concept, it's going to come with experience. Oh, I should. It, this is too far to make it back to that corner. Like, Kingsdor is pretty simple, right? Uh, sorry. Because of the way it's uh, played out, like you, you, if you're losing the shield bar here, you have no cooldowns. Obviously, you just fall back here, right? Or you fall back there. But there, there's very obvious options. Whereas like Kings Row first, it's not as clear. It's it's very clear now that I've kind of outlined it for you. Uh, but it's if if it's if you don't have a lot of experience on the hero, if you don't think about that um, concept, then it's very very easy to make that mistake. Obviously. Again, right? You're walking towards him and you're fortifying instead of going backwards. If you step backwards, he slams you, does not matter. Right? Same thing. I see, I see. Yeah. Never thought about it. Yeah. And then you could also, you know, because now you pulled, you pulled very early. I don't know if you communicated it, probably not. But, you know, if your hog is there, you can obviously go for that pull. You know, because you can pull hook and maybe, maybe kill him or at least make it make it so that he can't actually slam you but if you're not using it for that then you could potentially do the same thing as we talked with winston right doesn't have grapple doesn't have his e doesn't have a slam where do you pull right here why actually probably over here just so i have easier time but but it's a big ball anyway no ha um Head hit hitbox maybe right here. Uh, let's see. What maybe you... exactly in the middle, so he doesn't have momentum to go. But he doesn't have momentum anyway. So yeah. what what is another good way to stop the momentum? What do we talk about on first point? Uh, halt. Yeah, but in in terms of um. Uh, you know how, how yeah like a halt obviously, but. How can you stop his momentum for longer? Uh, in the air? Yep. So, do you think this, this is the optimal position? So, that one makes... So if I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, this is probably the worst one out of all all of them. Yeah, because make him closer to his teammate. Mm -hmm. um, Very good. Uh, so if I hook him on this. So side, if you want to pull him in the air and further away from his team, from you know this team being able to help him, where do you pull? Like that'll be the furthest. Like right on top of my team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or or here. Because, um, yeah, like it's a, a somewhere in this vicinity. Simply because if you pull him here, yeah, you pull him in the air, but from here, there's still potentially an angle from which he can get healed, right? Like he, he's gonna, if, if he has teammates oh, around the next Anna, corner. Yeah, so, Anna, he, Anna, so Anna, she can okay. potentially heal him. But if you pull him over here, he has to roll all the way. He's closer to the wall, so it's going to take him longer to clear this corner. So even if an Ana is potentially there, it's going to take longer uh, for him to get that help. Gives your team, he pulls, 
puts him further towards your team. Like this is almost always going to be his escape path. Obviously, he can go the other way as well, but most of the time he okay. won't. Most of the time he's just going to try and roll out back towards his team. So this way you make it harder for him to roll back towards his team uh, and you just maximize the, the time you've stopped him. Wow. Cool. Right? Like everyone's already here, right? So everyone's helping yeah. him. And he, and he almost dies. Because you can't keep shooting him. Because he clears the corner much faster, right? But otherwise, he might have been, like, here. And then maybe these guys can't help him. And then, obviously, you would have been further back as well, correct? Even like, a little bit uh, body block, potentially. Exactly, yeah. Because as soon as you saw him rolling in, like, now, if you play this game now, you would already be around here. So when he slams... You the pull would have been even easier, and then these guys wouldn't be able to shoot you because that's another reason. When the shield is here and you fortify and you turn around to shoot him, you don't know what's going on. You know, like you don't know who's gonna shoot you, which is why you almost die. Which is why he has to use his lamp, and you don't want him to, because now it's, he gets really good value. Like he gets so much damage in. He forces all of your cooldowns. He forces your lamp just with one slam when he's going in one versus six. But as soon if you just do this. He probably, he doesn't get this, he doesn't, he, he gets this, but he doesn't get this, he doesn't get this either most likely, or he dies. Or you, you have to use these maybe, but he dies, or there's a larger chance that he dies. Okay. And that's extremely, extremely important that you start doing this, not only because of all the things that we just discussed, but also because of the mind potential. So if you don't step back, and he has mm -hmm. minds in this situation, if you think, think about it this way. What if he mines now? I'm cut off. You're dead, right? Where you have nowhere to go. Obviously, you, you can go maybe there. Maybe you can survive on a health pack, but you're completely isolated. You can't go back to your team. Your team can't really help you. Um, and the enemies can shoot you from that angle, right? But if you start falling backwards and you see him mining, maybe you can fortify and still walk through this. You know, there's there's a much bigger chance that you keep the mines in front of you and then you can shoot them down and that's another way you can negate that but very important that you read his movement and you move with him Again, you heard you heard him slamming. You didn't see, but you heard him slamming. So as soon as you hear, hear him slamming, now you, you you have to fortify earlier just because your shield is dead. You don't have a new one, you know. Because this is like a, a good example because it's a different situation. It's one where you maybe can't really read mm -hmm. into it, but you hear the cue. You hear the cue. You know that this this is not a position where I can get slammed up because everyone has an angle on me. Right. But now you fortify when you've already flown up in there. Just, you know, another thing, you know, like if you just play a little bit further back, like there's no reason for you to be here. You can, you can stand here and then you're much closer to the, to the next corner. All right, still same value. Yeah. Especially since this is like you don't have a double shield, so you know that this is going to fall. So you have to be much more defensive. Okay, so what what is wrong with your your positioning and how you're reading this situation and the sequence after that slam? Uh, that's a bad halt. Uh, what what do you think about this shield? It's not good. I shoot it somewhere. I'm gonna already give up anyway. Yeah, like you're, you know that you're giving up this corner, right? Yeah. So, and why, like, and 
another reason why do you think so you know obviously like no one no one can use this shield because everyone's going to be already further back on the other corner but what is another thing that is kind of on the board now that makes it so that this shield doesn't make sense beyond what we just discussed how, how do you generally use your bongos behind cover mm -hmm. try to uh, yeah don't always do it uh, yeah so like now you can't use bongos right like there's no way right in this in this sequence you would never use it here right no because it's hard for uh it's easy for them to disengage mm -hmm. but what would be a good way to use your bongos now like how do you how do you set up so that you can use your bongos here I put the shield further up. Is that going to allow you to bongo? I think if I put it here and bongo here. And they just walk through it, right? Oh. And then where do you go? You don't know. You have you have no idea where your team is. Like, you don't know what's going on. You know that they've been pressured back. You know you've already lost your immortality field. Because mm -hmm. we just established you don't want to hold here anymore. Not when the payload is here. Okay, because Arisa needs distance kiting. Yeah, you you need to be able to get back to the next corner, the next corner, because you're just so slow. Right. So if you fell back here a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. and put down, and this shield goes here. Uh mm -hmm. Now, it would be not not a terrible time. Like you can hide the bongos here. They can't walk past you and kill that because you have cover. Mm -hmm. You can benefit from from it by taking pressure off the cart you can be benefit from it trying to burst the ball who just dove you behind you right like you create so much space with the bongos if you just utilize it like this in this sequence all right okay and this is an extremely powerful ultimate as long as you know how to use it correctly so it's very important that you think about that you're also like you're still holding this corner without a shield and without any cooldowns so should i uh back up right now knowing that i don't have those cooldown yeah right oh, like you, you you know that you it, same thing that we talked about in the first point right that you have nothing you know your shield is gonna break you because you, you know you can't stand on your shield so if you can't use if you can't use your shield then everything else is on cooldown how can you hold that space okay right unless you know unless you can use the payload as cover that that would be the exception, but in this situation, you can't use the payload as cover because your teammates are too far back and all of them are there. So you would just fall over, right? Mm -hmm. But if there's a little more distance and you can use this kind of as a shield, then maybe you can maintain that space even even without cooldowns. You can use that cover to to regain cooldowns. But now you pretty much. So where do you need to go based on the situation? Ah. Uh. Right there. Mm, I mean, not terrible, but probably there. I mean, okay. e either way, just just to cover, help help them peel off because it doesn't matter if you put the next shield forward. No one's going to be able to use it because everyone has to deal with the dive tanks, and so do you. Uh -huh. So, because you know that these guys will be falling back, these guys will not be pushing forward anytime soon. Then you might as well fall back, put the next shield here or here, uh, you know, next to a corner where you have cover, and then focus on peeling. Okay. You're looking forward. Like, there's no reason for you to look forward here at all. You're, you're going to give up this. You're going to give up this corner. Because of that shield, uh, That that's going to be your next corner. But you're pushing forward, right? So now, even though you get a shield, you don't have cover. If, if you put it here, still not a good spot because, you know, a lot of holes going to be difficult for you to fall back. You won't be able to keep this space because really with your shields, you want to be able to keep that space. So you want a little bit of distance, like you said. And, yeah, you know, this this pull, you, you, just, you just heard Winston jump behind you, right? Yeah. No one's, is anyone going to be able to convert on this? No. Right. So again, same thing, playing against Winston. You said oh, it was difficult for me. It's going to be difficult for him. Yeah, obviously, he has Winston ult here, but if he doesn't have Winston ult, then you have to be able to convert those skills. And you have to punish that really hard. 
Yeah, because I know King's Row is not even a good map for no. dive. No, it's not. Well, it can work, but it's especially like this. Like, this isn't dive. This is two dive tanks with no, no one else to dive with, which means you can easily, easily push these guys off. He jumps in, you fall back, you put your shield further back, you deal with him, then you all push forward. Most likely you get the kill. Even if you don't, you can retake the space because they have to heal up. What's this? You just won the fight, right? Like, where yeah. are you gonna hold? Probably back there again. Yeah, you want to hold a corner where you have LOS, you have good range, and then you have you're able to fall back to the next cover. Because you waste this shield, you get into this loop of mistakes. You see Hanzo? I should just walk there and uh, shoot the, uh, the shield up in the air, maybe. Yeah, you can do that. Or just okay. like you don't even I have do. you don't even have to rush and shoot it. There's no pressure. No one's shooting you. The fight is over. You can actually you actually have the time to think about. Hmm. Okay, where do I want to hold next? The fight is over. You don't have to rush out a shield. He's now you end up in a street, and, and then you use your fortify. Like, does he have any kill potential on you at all in this situation? No. No, he doesn't. Right. So you don't want to waste your fortify like this. That felt really bad. And now, uh oh, look who's coming. Go here. He's coming. He's coming for that ass. Well, it doesn't matter if you go there. You just wasted this. Well, yeah. In in theory, no one is close enough to kill you. So yeah, like you you're correct. Go in here. You're probably gonna be able to survive. Probably. That's assuming you play properly, right? Like you play with your shield here. You see him coming. You fall back. You're full HP. You still have your fortify. Issue is, you've lost almost half your HP. You've lost your fortify. You don't have your ball. So now the situation is, is a little bit different. Obviously, you still have to do the same thing, probably. Mm -hmm. um, but now he can actually punish you because you've you've wasted everything and you're not full HP. Uh, another thing you can also consider in some situations when you're really in trouble, especially when you don't have your fortify against ball is to use cover where he can't slam, you know, like in, in this situation, because people are still dead, because Hanzo fell back, maybe you could, obviously it's a little bit risky to go in here because, you know, Hanzo is still alive, maybe he comes back and these two isolate you and you don't have anywhere to fall back, but something to consider as well that you can always try and use cover where he can't slam as well. Oh. Okay. So now he didn't slam, but you know, if he slammed, maybe, maybe he gets you, who knows. Yeah, the dragon would be so dangerous. Yeah. But I don't care so much about the dragon, it's just that you, you can see how, how you gave Ball a potential opening. Like if your healers are busy doing something else, then maybe they're chasing the Han, so maybe you die there to the Ball. If he's brave enough, and he understands that your cooldowns are down. And he understands the matchup as well. So why do you stay here? Who can you, who can use this shield? <laughs> Me. Yeah. So the rest of your team is just gonna hide here and wait, right? They can't peek. They can't peek this angle. Hans is gonna shoot them. McCree's gonna shoot them. Sure, you're stopping the payload, but you're annoying. But I mean, so this this would actually be good. Uh huh. Let's put it this way. This type of a position where you're stopping the payload and you're putting yourself in a corner. What composition does your team need to play for this to be like a viable position? Like in what situations do you think this can be okay? When you can be very selfish and just shield for yourself. Like triple DPS? Yeah. Correct. Because you're basically just a bot who holds the... Um, 
payload, right? Like you're holding the payload, everyone else is roaming. You have Tracer, Genji, Pharmacy, maybe even Quad DPS, right? There's no one who, uh -huh. needs, who needs to use your shield. You're only there for uh, object, objective control and objective pressure. So in that situation, completely fine because you're super annoying. Maybe they're shooting you, but well, if they commit on you, you have four DPS who are gonna destroy their backline or they're gonna come and peel for you, right? So that, that situation, anytime you play Orisa Hog, not viable, right? You have to shield for your team. Again, very early with a pull, right? Yeah, also better on the wall next time I remember. Yeah, but but the po point is it's just a little too early. Too early. Yeah. As that's before he slammed, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. He slammed out of it. Okay. Uh, exactly, right. So you can wait for him to slam and then use that time while he's slamming. Like as soon as he's going in here, just track his positioning and read where he's going to slam. And then that's going to give you a better uh, timing on the ball because you don't have to rush it. You know that he's going to... Obviously, you don't want to gamble with the pull before he's slammed. So if he's just going in like this and not slamming, you don't want to gamble with it because he's going at such a fast speed. It's going to be very difficult for you to land it consistently. So you're basically just waiting until he goes up in the air. When he's up here, you know that he's going to be slamming. And then you can already... While he's on his way down, you can be shooting out your, um, like as soon as he, you hear the, um, the sound cue that he's gonna be slamming down. That that's when you can calculate where you're gonna pull. Okay, calculate that point. Okay, not terrible. Could have used that bongos a little bit earlier while your shield was still full HP, but okay. not not badly executed. You can see how it made them all fall back. It lets you control the corner. So again, we're in the same situation. No cooldowns, low shield. Uh, where do you need to go? Uh, that corner. Mm, do you think you can make it back? Or am I using the cart? Yeah, you can use the cart, for sure. You, you have this off of two cooldowns. You step in here, you take cover, you reshield. Right? It's going to be very difficult for you to turn around and, and you know, maybe she sleeps you and you die. You cover, you take cover here. Maybe she can't sleep you, and then you put down a shield, and then she has to overextend to sleep you, or, or hit any nades, or even heal anyone beyond your shield. Like if there's anyone right. in your background, uh, uh, in oh, your back two seconds. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see. If I do it more careful, I should. I waste. Um, I think this case, I should just keep shooting forward. Yeah, and while you're moving this way, right. You can move this way, take a bit of cover in case it breaks, and then pop out and use this here again, probably. Okay. Because then if this breaks as well, like the second one, and you guys still haven't won the fight, then you're probably screwed anyway in this situation. Okay. But at least to stop the pillow, you don't give them too much free push. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry. That's okay. Bless you. Yeah, any questions or no? Um, so I heard the matrix is coming up. Should I go back and use it or just stick with the card? Should I be shooting? No, stick with the card. You, you're stopping the payload here. Okay. Because it's against turning around, going backwards, shielding. I mean, of course it's situational. If you start falling back a little earlier, uh -huh. say, say they are holding that corner and you just put down the shield and it breaks super fast and you know, know that you might not be able to hold this and you start moving backwards a little earlier then yeah it's fine but now i think uh, you've stayed aggressive for quite a long time it's probably going to be difficult for you to um to back off and it's fine if you're the if you if you're holding this space down they have to deal with you and then the rest of your team can still use the uh, matrix usually these mm -hmm. this obviously optimally he wants to use it in a way where everyone can use it uh, but he's not going to be thinking about y you. He's going to be thinking about him, uh, himself. So if you're holding here, 
if and they're focusing on you and he's matrixing he can heal you even more so that you being here you can pull out so many cooldowns you can be so annoying and mm -hmm. your job isn't here to use the matrix and to kill people it's just to to stop okay. the uh, payload control and then yeah he can he can save you Like, you're not using it anyway now, right? Yeah. And you missed an opening on the monkey again, right? Oh, so actually, if I... If the car was a little bit further... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, the cart was further back. If I can test there, the car will stay there, and then I just yeah. turn 180 and shoot the monkey through the matrix. Yeah, you can do that too. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, okay, the yeah, matrix work, works both ways, correct. Yeah. But also, now that you've backed off and you've shielded backwards... I don't have that anymore. You're opening, right? Should be a dead man, right? The halt. Just, just jumped. You have this. He has bubble. You stepped into the bubble correctly because you have this. This is correct. But now you have to pull, right? To keep him. Yeah. You're like, no, I'm going to let you live. You're, you're a very merciful person. <laughs> he, di he dies anyway, but yeah. You're, you're focused on the wrong thing. Like, you, you should be. As soon as you see the monkey mm -hmm. going here, you can start moving this way because obviously... You don't want to turn your back on the rest of the team. Right. But you know you have to punish the monkey. So you could be falling back this way while shooting him, while looking for a pull, and then reshielding here and, and also taking cover. And then you have uh, fortified your disposal because now you're like, you're looking this way, you're looking that way. It's chaotic. Like, there's no way for you to know what's going on in this fight. Right. Which is why you die with two major defensive cooldowns. And you should you should only die when you have none of these, and they make a good play. Oh, interesting. So when I play a ball, I feel like I, I tilt Arisa's a lot. <laughs> no, it's probably well. I mean, it, it is a bit annoying, but if you know how to play against it, it's not really that bad, right? Like you, we've already established a very easy way how to counter it, right? right. Nice, you're using cover. Just like we talked about on in the previous fight, right? Like you can see that come to fruition here. You wait for your cooldown and then you reshield. Obviously you get booped, booped forward by the monkey, but still, yeah. I like how you used cover there. The thought was correct. If you don't get booped there, you guys hold and then you can bongo around the corner and you probably win. So close. Did I have the halt on cooldown? Probably not. I mean, I mean, fortify. Uh, yeah, I do believe he used it. Let's see how did he use it. Okay, so you used it without anyone slamming you with the immortality field up. Granted, you you were naded and you were taking damage. Um, but if you're naded, you know, probably not a great idea anyway, because you're not like you, you still have this to save yourself. So shielding and like shielding here potentially, and just trying to survive with that and holding your fortify for a little bit longer, probably a better idea. Okay. Wait, once it's off cooldown, especially against the ball, you have to be a little more defensive. Okay, so you used it here again. You used it against the Hanzo. A, a low Hanzo. Mm -hmm. So you're pretty consistently wasting your Fortify in 1v1 one, one situations, pretty much 1v1 one one situations. 
instead of taking cover. And you should not, this is, he can, he can jiggle peek you. You don't ha really have a lot of kill potential. And you should certainly not commit such a major cooldown and fortify. Mm -hmm. Just like, it's not your job to kill this guy. Okay. So you shoot him. Now you don't have a shield. Fall back, right? No pressure. This guy's been pushed off. You, you can still hold the payload and take cover. Either behind the payload yeah, we or... We have closer spawn. Yeah. Just hold the place. Yeah. Okay. But you waste it there. Which is why you get booped, which is why you guys lose the fight. Granted, you do take cover. But now you should probably just reshield here, just a little more defensively. And then you have double cover. Then it's very easy for them to kind of break this bunker. But you shield up a little too far. Right, because if, if you shield here and he boops you forward, you can still recover this distance and potentially survive. But if yeah, you shield up here annoying. and you get pushed down there, you're not getting back. Oh, if I'm if my body touched a car, he cannot boop me forward like that. Because the cart is in the way. Yeah, you just have to use cover. You have to be aware that he's trying to boop right. you. All tracking. So what do you think oh. about what you're up to now? Why why are you shielding here? Why are you moving up here? I just backed the gauge. This would be enough distance. But then Hanzo was right on top here. It was pretty annoying. Beyond that, like, it, it, why can't you fight? Why, why why can't you fight in this situation? Because we're down two. Right. So. You have no kill potential, you, there's nothing you can accomplish, you're just looking to stag yourself here, basically. Right. Two people are dead. Should I just hold like right? Uh... A third one died, so three people are in spawn. You just wait. You just wait close to spawn. So wait, wait on a mini, probably, right? But you're, you're not pushing up. Ah... Uh... And again, you waste your fortify on the boop. This is the second time when you get booed back and then you fortify. So, and that's why you need to hold the fortify until you hear the cue of the slam. Because of the okay. situation. Because he might have booped you back and you're like, oh, thank you very much. Now I can fall back. If he doesn't boop you, if he swings up in the air above you and, and slams you, then you have time to react with your fortify. So, don't don't panic use this, but mm -hmm. wait, for, wait for the... Uh, Hammond sound cue. So now, when you've killed the Hammond, what do you think about your next shield in this situation? What, what do you think is the uh. best uh, best thing to do here? I might push up to the cart. Yeah, I think you have two options. Either stay here or shoot up a shield onto the cart. Or like a shield that covers sort of around here. Then maybe you can use this cover. You know, shove the McCree out of there. Because realistically, they don't have much of a front line, right? Like your biggest advantage is that they have two dive tanks. So they can mm -hmm. dive and take space like that. But they don't have a lot of payload presence. So as long as you put your body on the point and kind of control this line they have to push in front of the shield to get you which means they're very very exposed to the rest of your team picking them off so yeah definitely with the hammond dead i wouldn't have minded you shooting up the shield a little bit and pushing this mccree maybe even you know pulling him here and putting pressure on him he would probably roll out and then you're controlling the payload they can't push also if hanzo is here instead of him potentially just being able to shoot down your shield like this he has to go closer to the edge to shoot down on you exposes himself to him and him right much much more right. difficult you're, you're playing cover you're stopping the card you're accomplishing kind of everything that you need to do hmm. didn't respect the shield break there you put this down and another thing mm -hmm. like 
this is fight is going really poorly for you already, right? Like you, and you know that if you lose this, you lose the game, correct? Yeah. So, and you don't have time to you to hide your bongos here, but you also don't want to just lose this game and not use the bongos, right? Mm -hmm. So, in like desperate situations like this, you could potentially just use it as soon as you put down your second shield. Somehow it didn't feel like that was that desperate, um, but maybe it... Yeah, I didn't really recognize at the at the moment. Very close. You just lost one. Everyone's in your backline. You don't have immortality field. It's certainly oh. not a situation you're feeling really good about. Even if you don't think, right. even if you don't feel like, oh, this is hundred percent lost. Still not a situation where you want to be greedy. So probably... Okay. Bongos. No one can shoot your bongos except for the tanks. You still have 900 HP shield. Obviously, it's mm -hmm. probably going to go down after that, but it gives it relieves a ton of pressure. Again, like you, you saw how much your bongos... How much pressure your bongos relieved uh, on that second point. So same thing here. You can potentially push the tanks away, maybe even kill them. Obviously, McCree can't challenge you anymore. Like, no one can really challenge you. They have to break the shield first. Uh-huh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The Zen. Yeah. I mean, you die just after the shield goes down. But yeah, if, if you have the Bongos there, maybe there's a bit of a chance that you can do something. <clears throat> Okay, so now we've got a yeah, bit of Reinhardt. I need a little bit tilted. <laughs> oh, this is laggy. I just felt like I couldn't do anything. Well. So you lost one. Yeah. Your entire team dies pretty much. They got a pick even before you left the choke point, so. I think that's also the same Genji that died first on the defense to uh, Widowmaker. Okay, this is yeah, Anna didn't communicate with me. Okay, nice, you got one. But it is a little bit difficult because you can't really... It's difficult for you to make a consistent maneuver forward when they have a ball. Because the ball... Like, you, you can't protect yourself against the ball as well as you can with the Orisa. So you always have to be aware of the ball's position. Okay. And you have to be very careful with your shield. So, like you're overholding your shield a lot, which is why it's breaking so fast. They have so much shield break. Mm -hmm. So very important that you use corners correctly and you don't... Because you're not really recharging it, right? You're still moving forward. Like now you should just take a bit of energy and fall back. But you're, you're holding your shield so much. Like with that bubble, as soon, as soon as he bubbles you, you know that you won't be able to push in. So you just peek and then you immediately fall back. And then maybe you can conserve like 800 shield and then recharge it a bit faster. Okay. Because that's why like you're, you're overholding shield way, way, way too much. So now obviously not all risk, so you have to hold it. Now you don't like why? Why are you letting it break? You know. Now you're now you're safe. Now you need to just go back here and recharge it. Okay. But you're never recharging it. You're going for a fire strike, 
And then you shield. There's no reason to shield here. There's there's one threat. You're full HP. You have your healers behind you. Okay. So I can can never let this break like this. It just slows down your recharge time by so much. No, now now you could potentially have like 800 or 900. Maybe. Well, not maybe, but maybe a little less, but still. Like all those things matter. But it's a constantly broken shield. You have to kind of shield, go to the next corner, conserve mm -hmm. a little bit, go to the next corner. Like that that's how you have to do, but you're just exposing it in a position where everyone can always shoot your shield and you're not thinking about like getting to the next corner. You're just like holding it all the time. I have to understand when you're safe and when you can afford damage to have damage sneaking past you. And especially if like now you're playing Moira and Ana. Mm -hmm. That's a ton of sustain. So as long as you're not in a position where like four or five or six of them can shoot you, you can afford to let your shield down a little bit uh, more because you have so much burst healing. Right. Also help them getting uh, ults. Yeah. Because really that's basically like against that type of a comp without speed boost, that's basically what you're doing. Like you're playing for, an, for a nano boost. Um, okay. But you know, you have to still play smart with your shield in case they mess up and... And, and so on and so forth, which is what you see. Like, you got Nano and immediately you guys won the fight. And usually, Nano's gonna be the first gold on the board. Yeah, Coalescence is also good um, against Orisa. It appears through the shield. S same thing here, you know? So, you move up here, you're discorded, so you know you can't swing. Like, as soon as you're discorded here, you don't have a bubble, you, especially if you don't have speed boost, there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. And now you should know your shield is going to break pretty quickly. Back up to the corner. I yeah. Guess. Just recharge so they, it. They cannot bit. walk in. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, recharge shield. Or at least, you know, let a little bit of it sneak through. Like, obviously, it's a bit risky. You have to pay attention to Ana so that he, she can't sleep you. But you need, to, you need to find a little more time to recharge it whenever possible. And as, as soon as you step... So as soon as you step further back... The Zen can't shoot you, or he has to overextend a little bit to shoot you. This is very laggy. Right, like, there's no reason for you to push all the way here. Okay. If if the Arissa isn't here, there's no reason for because you're just exposing your shield to to a lot more people. Much harder for you to hide. Like she's she just did what we talked about, right? She hid inside there to recharge her shield, which means if she is recharging resources, means the Zen can't peek. There's not much pressure on you now. You're not going to push this anyway. Perfect time for you to recharge as well, because you need resources for the when the fight starts too. But you can see the difference, right? What they did, and where, whereas what we talked about your Arisa on first uh -huh, one. Yeah. And now they still have a chance, because you're worried about this, you're worried about this. But ultimately, he's he's getting to shoot you without your team being able to shoot him back and without you being able to do anything about this while their Orisa is just recharging resources. I see. So he's pulling, even though you guys have the advantage now in terms of map control, this type of a position is pulling the resources back into their favor so that when they have a reshield, they have a clear advantage. They can go for a flank around you. Your shield is going to be low. Orisa is going to be reshielding here. So she's going to be, she's going to be fine. You know, he also has trance in case something goes wrong. So, like, you can already see how everything's falling apart here. I hate this. Ugh. So, I don't mind the spin. If, well, it's risky. For, I mean, it's risky for sure. But, most importantly... I, I, don't, I wouldn't mind this if it's for, like, to put, put, pin inside the grav. And if it's to pin inside the grav, um, then um, you need to pick a different target. But here you just desperately pinned because your shield was down, correct? Yeah, just a little bit frustrated. Uh... But ultimately you get pressured into this because you didn't rest your shield. Right? Like, if, if you right. just, if you fell back here, you used this little room to recover, the Zen wouldn't have been able to push here and pressure you until uh, until he reshielded. He reshields, maybe you have 1,200 or 1,100. He grabs, 
which means you can use that 1100 to get closer into the grab. Even if he trances, maybe you can pin uh, an Anana or you can pin someone towards your team. Okay. Right. But if you give yourself more shield, you have more leeway to make that play. Because when you're going for this, so many things can go wrong. You're you're pinning into so many people. You're also pinning a target you won't be able to insta kill. You can get slept. You can, um, you know, like if there's no bubble, very difficult. But if you just wait for the grab, the grab comes in. Again, you have a little bit more HP. You can walk forward. Maybe you can pin pin the on. I like go for a short pin into a wall because you you want to avoid long range pins as much as possible, especially when it's into a cluster like this. This is very very risky. You can see you don't get a kill at all. Would have been nice to pin her now, right? Because the trance came out. Boom. Short yeah. pin, you, you get her. Or like maybe if you were coming from that way, short pin, you know, short pin her into that wall. Or just one swing, step behind the Arisa shield, five man shatter. I think you get that here and you, you get that here anyway, but you get it you barely get it and you almost die because you went for that pin. Right? Yeah. And even though you shatter, you guys don't really get a kill. You get one kill. And you die anyway. Like, that, that that's my point. Like, when you get the shatter, you still need to have some HP. Because now, yeah, you do get the shatter, but it's inside the trance, and you die because you went for a long pin. With no shield. That's not the last one I'm gonna do. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of, I think a lot of lower level players make this mistake where when their shield breaks, they think that when the shield is breaking, when they're under a lot of pressure, they kind of go, well, my la I have nothing else to do. My last resort is to pin and hope for the best. And that's wrong. Like you should, you should be playing in a way where you avoid those situations altogether. When you recognize that your shield isn't going to hold, and you rest it in the correct way so that it never comes to the, that that you have to pin into it and you should never pin into it either unless i mean it's a, like a desperate situation whatever but yeah ultimately it's just about playing smarter avoiding those situations am i pushing too far up or is it about right no this is fine you're no longer orissa so you can move with your shield i don't mind this but you obviously have to fall back um depending on the payload position. You can you can pressure up here and just look for staggers because usually people don't regroup. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, you have to understand that when they've already pushed up to you, like payload is super far back. So if you take the fight here, you're taking one man down. So it's fine to push up here, look for staggers, but when they've regrouped, if the payload is this far back, fall you fall back. back. Okay. Right. Because now, very far for you to the next corner, right? Because you, they, they can walk up to this, like this, and take the corner. Whereas you you can't really punish and it's going to be hard for you to fall back. Whereas if you hold that corner and you guys pressure and they come out here, then Orissa has a choice to make. She either shields here, which means they can't take space, or she pushes forward and shoots the shield, which gives you a little more time to get back off a little bit, kill their shield, and then she's in a position, do I hold the card or do I fall back? And you make, you know, you make it a little harder for them. Um, I see. but you don't, you don't want to meet like shield, shield for shield here when you have map control, especially when you don't have speed boost. You see, like payload was here, like you can't really get help. And, and the same, th and the same thing, like you, you could use payload as a cover, right? Like payload is one of the best spots to recharge your shield using it as a cover. Yeah, for Reinhardt, yeah. Yeah. So now you've lost 1,000 shield just walking up. How can you avoid this? Um, like going around or probably doing that. How about this? Mm. 
What do you think like about inside that? the... No, like literally following this path. Because this is where you want to get, right? Yeah. You go this way, you're going to get shot at. You go this way, the further along this wall you get, the more they're going to have to peek. They're going to have to peek in front of their shield. They don't want to peek in front of their shield. They don't even want to be close to their shield because if the shield breaks, they might mm -hmm. die. Like a Zen doesn't want to stand there because if you guys break it, he might get picked off. He wants to he wants to play behind the shield but also close to cover. Which means if you go this way, he has to take a risk to pressure you. Which means you save a lot more shield. But if you walk up in a straight line with your shield exposed or you're flashing your shield, that means you have to s stop here and then you have to wait for your shield. Maybe you are maybe you have to shield in this path as well, but maybe you lose like 300 and you almost immediately have it. Because obviously, oh, okay. obviously you might have to escort your teammates anyway. Like maybe you have to escort your teammates uh, anyway, so you have to use your shield. Uh, but it won't be as much. But, but really... He can't do anything. Like he can't get. There's no snipers on 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 their comp in their comp. You know he can probably do a lot of damage. But if you guys go this way, they, you know, not not that big of a risk of them getting a pick off. But now you're exposing it to all of them, right? Because, but if you if you were here, only he can shoot you. Bar he can barely get. He can, like if he steps here, he can maybe get an angle when you're here, right? Yeah. So you just negate his angle, and then he either reshields here to pressure you, or mm -hmm. he doesn't. And then you save your shield, and then you walk up here. And wow. then maybe you force a second, and then, you know, like, say you, say you walk up here, you go for a fire strike, he places a second shield, boom, that's an opening for you to go in front of his shield and maybe shatter. Because you know he doesn't have a reshield. But you're flashing it so much. And it's the same thing as we saw on first point. Like, you're, you're very bad with your shield management. Because you're not using map, the map, map architecture to your advantage. You're just always standing in front, in, you know, in, in front of the Arisa. Especially when you have to recover a long distance, you have to use cover. You, you can't ever expect to, because especially since she has two shields on the defense, mm -hmm. she can always fall back to the next corner. So you, you, it's gonna be, it's gonna take a while. And then now you're going for a charge again. Whew. I'm, I'm very scared about this. We'll see how this goes, but I'm not. You're you're charging into into double into triple to three heroes who can CC you. What's the upside? Maybe you hit the McCree, maybe you hit the Ana. Even if you hit them, you probably get stunned. That and you're also discorded. I think the chance that this is probably a, a play that pays off like two percent of the time. Two percent of the time, okay. Right? Because think about it, like you're not gonna pin these guys. Right, you're not gonna pin them. They can protect themselves. Maybe you hit a lucky pin on them, but then it also has to be against the card. If you hit it like this, then there's three people who can't CC you unless you get a bubble. But you haven't. I don't think you've called for a bubble. Boom! You hit you hit this guy. Now, now you've actually ended up in in a good spot where you can shatter. Ah, uh, a little bit, into trance. but a little bit early, yeah. Because this again, this is what I mean as well. Against the Arisa, you have to pay um, because like now now this worked, but it, but it, another reason why this sort of works is because no one actually stuns you and your Genji blades, and when he blades, everyone is focused on him rather than you. Right. Um. But also, yeah, like anytime he trances, well, it's gonna depend. Uh, you have to pay attention to your shield. So, but what I talked about here. You know that now she has this shield, Theresa has this shield, and then she has another one. So when you break this one and she puts her second one, that's your potential uh, like 10 second window where you can find a shatter when you know she won't block it. Because no one else can block it. Even if she does just herself with a fortify. Yeah. Boom. Just got placed, right? So now you have like 10 seconds. So you still you could wait like delay two seconds, take cover behind payload, and then shatter them potentially. Still with the cart. Yeah. Ah, that's just awareness. Ah. 
So I like what you do here in terms of putting yourself... Mm, maybe it would be better to play around payload. It's difficult to say because they have a trance. It's kind of difficult for you to secure a kill. Uh, but I don't mind like you taking cover here. Okay. Because you can potentially... Like you can potentially still swing over here and then if and then people have to actually push into you to kill you. So you can still do some damage, but uh, I don't know. I mean it's it's a difficult situation regardless. And then you almost have to trust your teammates to kill that McCree. You can't you can't turn around away from five people. You're just gonna melt it. Yeah. But yeah, like you can see how a lot of times you'll lead with the charge when there could be a better opening. Like Genji bladed, and then you you had already used your charge, and then you shattered. Whereas if he bladed, forced the trance, mm -hmm. you know there's still a five second window for your shatter. You move in for a shatter, and then you can still pin inside the shatter. Like you have all of your cooldowns. Same thing on first point. You pinned before the graph came out. If you just waited for the graph to come out and then went for a short pin or looked for a shatter inside it, mm -hmm. your shatter doesn't overlap with the trance as much, and you know because you're forcing so much. Like you're nothing happens and you're just forcing a pin, which is why you end up in these situations where you get an opening but you get no value out of it. it seems like guys, I'm getting a six man shatter here. Like why are we not getting value? And you know that's that's basically why. You still have to rely on your teammates to do uh, to do stuff or to create an opening. And then you pick your windows a little smarter. And we lost the fight. Oh, goodness. And then you for some reason still move up here. I don't know I don't know why you're you're just showing your shield in. Now your last guy spawned. And now you have to recharge shield. And they had people who were dead as well, so now you could already be moving up with the rest of your team, but you have no shield. So the the, the window that you get, because you guys have a spawn advantage, but that window is pretty much gone now because you exposed your shield. I guess that fight wasn't winnable. So should I hide in the room or something? Or just not charge in? Not charge in. Okay. Like, look, look at when you charge in. Look at what, what information do you have? You're dead. They lost Zen. We lost. We lo just lost three, but they lost Zen. So, if you just wait and regroup, there will be a time when you can fight six versus five. Correct. Mm -hmm. Oh. Now this is this is a one versus five or one versus. You know, obviously, he gets another kill as well. But even even then, like you need to you need to look around you and make sure that someone is coming with you here. Yes, now so Genji gets a kill. Now it's a, a one versus four, right? Your Genji just died as well. Three people are still in spawn. Maybe you have one person behind you, but really you're one versus four here. Then I had a back count burn. Uh. And then even if you guys push up. And they don't want to take the fight four versus six or four versus five, they can still fall back here and shield up and hold that corner just because you burn your shield. And that, like, your window just shrinks. Yeah. Also, no reason, like, because you're overexposing shield again. Right? Like, why are you shielding against the Orisa? You can just be stepping back here, stepping back here. Hook is hook is the, gone. If the hook is gone, there's no threat for you. Like they can't kill you from this distance. Hook is the only threat. So now you can, okay. even when you've made this mistake, just put your shield down at one thousand two hundred. Let her mm -hmm. pee, let her pee on you, and then you're gonna get around the corner. Right. Yeah. You're getting a nice little golden shower here. <sighs> Seven hundred shield. Ooh. Oh. oh, oh, you had it one as well. 
the five plus one. And then you go for, yeah, like you just don't go for YOLO pins. Don't go for a long YOLO pins ever. Okay. And this wasn't even a situation where you got pressured to do it because something was going wrong. Here, all you had to do to win the fight was hold the shield. Long pins are generally a very bad idea. Because now you got punished, you know, but I feel like you should have gotten punished in a similar way on the pin in the previous fight when uh, when you pinned, uh, you know, when you pinned when the Zen uh, tranced, right? Like, that's that's how it's usually going to go when you're going for these long pins. Especially when you're playing against so much CC. Nice. You blocked the hook. Nice. You're, you're using cover. Expose your shield a little too early again. Right, okay. like you're, you're pushing the cart. I like, I love this. You're recharging. You're getting heals. What's the point of pushing up here? Like you know, they're just gonna go for. They're they're gonna sh shield here. So you want to have a full shield for, and then that happens. You're not under any pressure. You guys are pushing cart. You're gonna be able to contest this space. But now you're showing it too early. So you should only show it when it's two thousand, or when Orissa comes okay. out. Okay. Now you should be moving up and shielding up. But now you've lost too much and then yeah, you overextend in front of shield. Right? So what what so let's say you save the shield. What's the play here for you? Um let them come in and maybe shatter them. Mm hmm Like after a fresh shield, just walk a little yeah. bit and after first shield, what, you want to walk into them? And uh, shatter. Oh, oh no. It's McCree and things. You, you want to do this? This is what happens if you do that, right? Yeah. So what else do you want to do? What can you do instead? Uh, play the cart. What else can you do? Um, I feel like if I stay here, how much can they do to me? If you have a 2000 shield? Yeah. Not much, right? Because they cannot just walk in like that. No, of course not. They have to shoot you. That means we push a card pretty much for free for a good while. Yeah. So just hold the space here. Don't try to do more. Mm -hmm. What else? How can you carry this fight? If you, if you would have played it correctly and just waited mm -hmm. till he puts up his shield, who has more shield? I have more shield, 2,000. Mm -hmm. In and the next has, couple and seconds. He, and he has 900. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how can you carry this fight? Should I tell you what I would do? Yeah. I would be standing there. Uh huh. As soon as they see her falling back there, and I would say, "Resting my shield." As soon as she, as soon as she puts her shield down, break it super fast. I'm gonna shatter. Right. Oh, break and shatter. As soon as soon as this comes out, you come out as well and shield up like this, and you mm -hmm. and you you have already communicated to your team that they're mm -hmm. gonna break the shield as soon as it goes down. As, as long as they listen to you and they break it and they shoot it you should be able mm -hmm. to win granted they have a little more shield break than you 
but you okay. also have 1,000. If you manage your shield correctly, you have 1,100 more HP. So half your team would literally have to look up in the sky and not do anything for you to lose the shield war, or he would have to bongos. You know, bongos, McCreel, something like that. But still, if you just ask them to break it, should break fast enough, and then you shatter. Because you know this is the second shield. As soon as this breaks, you have like a five to six second window. So that's like you have to find windows uh, when uh, when the shield is on cooldown. So you have to pay attention to when she places it and when it's on cooldown. Okay. And it's very easy to do. When you have map control like you do here, she's only going to have one shield. So you go, break next shield, I'm going to shatter. Never push in front of it like that. Unless maybe you're getting tranced and speed boosted in, you're playing goats, like of course you can do that. But in this situation where you're not you don't have a Lucy, you have very limited mobility, your playmaking ability is also limited. It's based off of you know your shield HP and their shield HP. So now a little bit harder because she has a double shield. Not because you lose your Lucio. But now, potentially, when you have a Lucio, you could... So, so how can you set up a Shatter now? Like, how can you change that call? Because you have a little... You have a few more tools at your disposal now, right? Mm hmm So how would you call it now to set it up? To set up a Shatter here? I don't really know. I'm thinking about maybe the zoning from Dragon or Dead Eye. Uh, I, I don't really know. So, the resources you have at your disposal. Oh, so, so you did have Lucio last fight as well, right? I guess. Uh -huh. But say he's alive, the way I, obviously before he dies, the way you can, you have way more resources now, right? Like you can go, instead of breaking the shield, because now breaking the shield is going to be tough because they have these ultimates and he has a double shield. So now setting the shatter up through just breaking the shield is going to be harder. You can't afford to play as a slow because the slower you play, the more time they have to uh, break your shield. So what you could ask, uh, Lucia beat, uh, beat me in. Zarya save mm -hmm. bubble. I'm going to push in front of the shield and... Shatter when they put down the second shield. Oh. Boom. Now, potentially. So say he hadn't died. Perfect opening for you. Beat me in, beat me in. Mm -hmm. Boom. You go in with a beat. You're going to survive this is see most likely. You can look for a shatter. Because you, you, you know that now you can push in front of this. With those resources. Okay. But beat only, only if they make that call. Because if you push it now and try that. Even though like... Theoretically, this is not a bad angle. Like, you can push front, in front of this. You know she doesn't have a shield to block it. Obviously, she has Fortify, but still, like, you can... you can With speed boost, you can push there. You can really find a good angle. Especially now when the hook is down. Boom. Like, now this, this should be a really juicy angle for you. If you just push right of card. Ooh, there we go. Let's see if you go for it. Yeah, you do. Nice. So how should I follow up uh, on the shatter? Fire strike. Ah. Oh. Everyone shoot Anna, shoot Anna, 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 Anna. Okay. Your fire strike takes her to what, like 50 HP? One other person shoots one shot, she's dead. Now the shield yeah. comes up, but yeah. Or you shatter the hog. You know, you could potentially do that too. Oh, your team clutches. Oh, wait. Again, you're in front of the cart. So you don't have an option to rest the shield. You're discorded as well, so you can't let your shield down. But if you're behind the card, you can let your shield down and wait out the discord, like LOS as well. 
here you can never remove the Discord un unless you get bubbled or the Zen chooses to remove it. Which means you're very limited in things you can do when this little thing is on you. You can that's another reason why you need you need to use payload as cover. It doesn't matter as much here because you have such a huge advantage, uh, honestly, because like so many of them are dead. They don't really have a proper retake. You have a, a numbers advantage. There's not as much pressure on your shield because, again, most of them are dead, uh, but still something you should um, consider potentially. Okay. So you're hearing a Reaper above you. I think. But you're not doing anything, yeah. Like, I, it seems like you're not great at listening to sound cues. Because from here on, I'm like, well, there's a Reaper above you. What are we going to do about it? Like, I would immediately be falling back and looking up. Right? The, okay. You can hear it, right? Right now. Not right now. Uh, oh, yeah, you, yeah. You hear the steps above you, right? So you need to be falling back immediately behind the cart and looking up because... Unless you secure that threat, you can't push forward. So you need, to, you need to get him out of there. Especially when they have a ball. So now, and, and that's another reason. Yeah, like, you're, you're standing on cart. Like, why are you why are you standing on cart? Like, just stand stand to the right side of it. Like, you can maybe get a fire strike angle. And you can fall, fall back. Okay. And then, why are you going for the spin? You know, like, it's... Of course, if if this is happening in a vacuum and he's doing it on his own, mm -hmm. the rest the rest of their team can't make a play forward. Fine, whatever. It doesn't really matter because it's like a low risk, medium reward type of a play. But because the Reaper is above you, you know you're you're focused on the wrong thing here. Okay. And even if you pin him here, he doesn't die. He goes and gets the mega, right? Which is why I'm saying medium award. I wasn't here to shield my team. Yeah. Ah, oh, goodness. I like how you use cover, but yeah, like that Reaper gets forgotten. Alright, rest your shield, rest your shield. A good habit to also get into. Anytime you're resting your shield, just swing your hammer. Okay. Why, why, why is that a good Yeah, well, why do you think that's a good habit? Like now, just swinging it. Uh, I guess it still take the same amount of damage. But um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, one, your model is moving a little bit instead of being completely stationary. Uh, number okay. two, if they have a Sombra and accidentally a Sombra is moving around here, you bring, uh -huh. bring her out of Invis, right? Oh. Um, also, another reason is, if say you're holding a corner here, and you're recharging shield, you're recharging, but you don't want to give up this corner, but you're recharging shield here, and you're just swinging. If someone wants to push through a choke point, then they will be taking the damage, right? Okay. Because if you're just standing looking at a wall, and they push in, you shield, they don't take that damage. If they push through here, one swing can turn the tide or give you a lot of old charge. So just a good habit overall to, to get into, to keep okay. swinging when, when you're resetting shield. If you look it at- It doesn't hurt anything. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't it doesn't hurt and it's just, I yeah. should probably, I should give uh, more of the old charge. Oh, I'm swung. Uh, yeah. Yeah, not sure about the swap uh, because you were so close to the shatter. You could easily get your shadow, I think, with one fire strike, probably. Maybe clutch the fight. Not a great idea, I think, to swap into the mirror when they have map control and they have shield advantage. And they have more shield break as well. You have Sombra and a Sniper, they have McCree and a uh, Reaper, so I think just objectively not a not a great swap there. Not known not only because of the ultimate, but because of the comms as well. Okay. So with the Ryan potentially some shattered clutches. Yeah. I mean you could have found um Fire Strike and clutched it. I mean you had a lot of openings to clutch with shatters. It's just like you didn't really take those openings. Ooh. 
you didn't like break shield or you didn't like speed boost in front of it. Uh, mm. But ultimately, the fact that they don't, they don't have a diva gives you a lot of free ult charge by just fire striking correctly. And you were fire striking pretty well. You were getting a lot of um, ult charge. It's just, yeah, it's just converting on the shatters once you get them. But yeah, I think um, I think we touched on a lot of uh, good stuff there. I think a lot of stuff yeah. is probably going to help you. I, I take notes too. It's a pretty long list. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can again. This is going to be. Uh, it's probably going to be up on YouTube at some point, but it's also yeah. going to be up on my Twitch channel here, so you can rewatch some some stuff. Especially like we touched absolutely. we touched on some Reinhardt stuff. We touched on some Arisa stuff. Especially the rest of stuff. I think is going to be kind of easy for you to uh, fix. You know, as long as you understand, because you saw like how many times you just got into trouble because you're not respecting when another like a mobile tank jumps behind you or jumps into you so the the way you know like as, as long as you get better at handling that everything's going to be a lot easier i think yeah uh, any other questions you have before we finish um so for main tank player what would you say is a good warm up routine mm. i mean juggling bots as winston and spawn i mean in um in a practice range or you know rather just creating a, a server maybe there's a workshop i'm not sure there, there has to be a workshop for like winston primal juggling i'm sure i think that's uh that's a very good one i mean in terms of arisa just i don't know you can, you can go in and just warm up your aim a little bit but mostly just remind yourself of um what you need to focus on uh, for the match because Arisa, you know, it's not, uh, yeah, a little bit of um, aiming, but it's not that, uh, it's not that important. It's important that you just play correctly. So, yeah. Um, so currently, I'm probably most comfortable with Arisa. Next one, probably Ball and then Ryan. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I don't, maybe have two, three hours on Winston. How important do you think I learn all four, four of those? I mean, it depends what your uh, purpose is. If you want to be a pro and you don't have a Winston, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, I don't think you can have a career as a pro. Uh, if that's not your priority, then yeah, like you can play. It's it's enough to play those three main tanks and make them work on most maps, honestly. Winston is pretty difficult to play, especially in a ranked meta right now. So I think you can go pretty far with those. And I, I'd, if you're just playing ranked... Uh, I'd recommend just trying to master them first before picking up Winston. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, thank you so much. I, I learned so much today. No problem. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm going to stop the recording and uh, yeah.